I hate to say I told you so, but take a look at this. President Trump, in a surprising reversal, asked his advisors to look into rejoining the Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Pact. This is... Okay, he's broken a lot of promises. This is the biggest promise to be broken. Now... He's already tried to slip the worst provisions of TPP into the renegotiation of NAFTA. So it's basically doing TPP by another name and just kind of squeaking it by and doing it silently so as to not piss off some working class people who voted for him. But now he's looking at officially hopping back in the TPP. And his whole shtick is going to be, and we said this from the beginning, Oh, before it was a bad deal. Now I'm going to make it an incredible deal. I'm going to make it the best deal ever. It's going to be an unbelievable deal. And so that's his dodge. His dodge is, oh, it's not that I was against, you know, outsourcing jobs in principle. It's that I just think the terms of the deal weren't the terms that I would agree to. And then once we get the deal better, uh, you know, then I'm in favor of it. And by the way, if you trust Trump to make those terms actually better, you're the biggest rube on the planet. Because if his history shows anything, it says he's going to make it worse. In fact, that's what happened with the carrier. Remember the carrier thing? He made a big fucking public scene of like, um, oh, I'm saving all these jobs this car at this carrier factory. Isn't this great? Had a giant photo op, gave a speech to the carrier workers. Well, a few months later, they started shipping out the jobs they were going to ship out anyway. Not only that, they also gave them a giant corporate welfare check, giant tax subsidies. So before, they were just going to outsource the jobs. Trump just delayed that a few months, let them outsource the jobs, and also hosed the taxpayers and gave them taxpayer money. So that's actually a worse deal. It's worse, it's, it's worse than if he did nothing. Well, this is the same shit. He's hopping back on TPP. He's probably going to make it worse. Now, but let's dig into the deeper question. Why is he doing it? Well, first of all, it should be noted that all the anti-trade talk on the campaign trail, that's just campaign rhetoric. That's all that is. So he, he knew, he could sense, oh, people don't want this deal, so he would just tell them what they want to fucking hear. So that should be noted up front, that it was just rhetoric. And if he was really in principle against um, outsourcing jobs, like he said he was, well, then he wouldn't outsource his own jobs. For fuck's sake, his products are made in at least 12 different countries. So he's going to rail against outsourcing. Meanwhile, his shit is made overseas. Ivanka's shit is made overseas. I mean, what a joke this is. Of course he's not fucking against it. If he was against it, he wouldn't be doing it. He is doing it. But the first reason really is look at who he surrounds himself with. So he says he's against trade, but he just hired fucking Larry Kudlow to be a top economic advisor. Larry Kudlow is an economist who's never been right about anything. He's against the minimum wage. This is one of those idiots who in 2006 and 2007 said the housing market is fine. There's going to be no crash. I mean, it, objectively wrong about fucking everything. By the way, Larry Kudlow massively pro-NAFTA. Trump said he was against NAFTA. Then why are you hiring a guy who's one of the biggest cheerleaders of NAFTA in the fucking country? So he brings Larry Kudlow in. Oh, look at that. Now all of a sudden he wants to go back to the same deregulation and tax cuts for the rich and fucking outsourcing jobs as every other president. You know, same thing with Bolton. Oh, I'm against war. He said that half the time. He brings Bolton in. Wow, look at that. Within a week, we're bombing the Syrian government. So this he's a cuck to the establishment. So he surrounds himself with guys like Larry Kudlow and Steve Mnuchin and a bunch of Wall Street lackeys. So when you're in the room with those people, that's the only picture of the world that's going to be painted for you and you're going to go, okay, I guess that's the direction that we go in. That's exactly what's happening. We've seen this before, man. Trump on the campaign trail railed against the skyrocketing cost of pharmaceuticals and oh my God, we're going to fight back against the pharmaceutical companies. Well, it took one meeting with the pharma lobbyist and he changed his opinion. And he was like, no, in fact, I think the pharmaceutical companies are the ones who are getting hosed. Oh my God. All it took was one smooth talking lobbyist to say, oh no, for reasons. <laughs> That's why you got to keep the prices really high, and we have to have drugs that are more expensive than any other developed country in the world. So he could have back. Uh, Bernie Sanders proposed an amendment. Hey, re import drugs from Canada. That'll cut the price in half like that. Trump was saying, oh yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to. And then when it came time to actually back it, shh. 
That's when he had the meeting with the lobbyist. All of a sudden, boom, changed his mind. So the first reason was as I laid out. Larry Kudlow, Steve Mnuchin, Wall Street lackeys. That's why he's hopping back in TPP. But the other one is John Thune is a Republican of South Dakota. John Thune had a meeting with Trump. In that meeting, he argued that the Trans-Pacific Partnership was the best way to put pressure on China. So recently, Trump did the tariffs that sparked a trade war where China's like, okay, listen, oh, you want to do those tariffs? Wonderful. We're going to slap you right back with the same amount of tariffs that you're slapping us with. Tit for tat approach. Trump's like, I'm going to do tariffs on you. They go, okay, we'll do tariffs on you. That's that. Now, Trump, in his idiot mind, doesn't realize that, okay, if you're going to do tariffs, and by the way, I've said many times before, I'm in favor of protectionism. I generally like the idea of tariffs. But he doesn't understand that if you're going to do tariffs, number one, you have to have a meeting with all the fucking heads of state of all the countries that you're probably going to do this with. You're going to have to talk to them to try to get some sort of a deal that's, that's amicable for all sides. But if you end up doing it, you have to do it the right way. You can't just fucking slap tariffs on them and then go peacocking around talking about how you're tough, I'm getting tough on China, I'm getting tough, I'm gonna put them in their place. Because then you embarrass them in the public, um, you know, you make them feel like they're getting shafted, and then of course they're gonna do reciprocal ta uh, tariffs on you. Of course they're going to. So he doesn't understand diplomacy at all. It, in any way. He doesn't understand that, you know, sometimes it's uh, carrots and not sticks. All he's got is the sticks. So, he's out there thumping his chest, expecting him to do tariffs on China, and then, all, oh, okay, you win, now I'll give you whatever you want. Of course they're not gonna do that. But since they responded in kind, he's like, okay, well, how do I get them back? And then now we come full circle to the same arguments that Obama used for TPP. Oh, somebody's gonna have control of the hemisphere, and somebody... It is going to have a trade advantage, and and it should be us, and it's better us than China, because, you know, hey, we should fuck over our own workers and outsource all of our jobs and get rid of all of our middle class, uh, you know, uh, industrialized economy, and give all the money to the rich so that we can control all the trade routes. So, in other words, it's a very, you know, economic imperialistic argument of like, well, somebody's going to control the entire world and fuck everybody over. Might as well be us. So that was Obama's basic reason for wanting to get in there. Oh, we can't have China dominate, so we need to dominate, so we're going to get involved in the deal. Well, now Trump, because he's a macho man and he wants to outdo China and win, he's like, okay, how do I get them back? Somebody says TPP. Okay, we'll do TPP. So the number one thing he railed against on the campaign trail, now he's like, all campaign rhetoric, who gives a fuck? I want to win. I want to beat China. So the new move is, comes full circle to what I was talking about. When Trump pulled out of TPP, I gave him credit, but then I also said, hey, listen, I wouldn't be surprised if he basically changes the name, changes some details, and then jumps right back into doing it. Oh, it's, the, it's not the Trans-Pacific Partnership, it's the Trump trade deal, and it's tremendous. The tremendous trade deal. The TTD. That's what this is. Not the TPP, the TTD. That's what this is. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do. He's trying to hop back in it now.